Hi everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. Today's topic is how to find the impulse response h of n if we're given the frequency response h of omega hat. And we're going to focus on doing this for um, FIR systems, so discrete time FIR systems. So let's get started. Okay, so the problem that we're given here, this is the example we're going to solve, is h of omega hat is 9 plus e to the minus j omega hat minus 3 e to the minus j 4 omega hat. And we're going to try and find the impulse response h of n from that. So to do that, we first remember how the impulse response and the frequency response are related. And they're related through this equation. The frequency response h of omega hat is the sum over n of h of n e to the minus j omega hat n. And so I'm just going to go ahead and write out a few terms in this sum so that we can get the pattern. So that would be h of 0 e to the minus j omega hat times 0 plus h of 1 e to the minus j omega hat times 1 plus h of 2 e to the minus j omega hat times 2 plus etc. Right? This summation would continue forever. So, um, that wasn't a very good ellipsis there, we'll redraw it. So that would continue forever. All right, now we've made one critical assumption here, is in doing this equation right here, from here, we've assumed that um, there are no terms for n less than zero. So we've assumed that um, h of n is equal to zero, for n less than 0 when we wrote um, this equation out, right? And that basically means we're assuming that the system is causal. Right? We wouldn't have to do that, but we're going to make that assumption here. And, and for the most part, in ECE 201, that's the assumption that we make. So now let's look. So now let's compare um, this equation, OK? Um, to an equation like that for h of omega. What we see in this equation here is that um, h of 0 is associated with the e to the j term that has a 0 coefficient up in the exponent. The h of 1 term, meaning the value of the impulse response at n equal 1, is associated with the e to the j term with the 1 in the exponent. Similarly, h of 2 is associated with the 2 in the exponent, etc. We could go on and on and on. So we can immediately read out, if we compare these two equations, we can use these coefficients as the values of h. So if we write that out for this, for this system, we know, based on reading off of um, here, we know that h of 0 is equal to 9, and h of 1 is going to be equal to, right, this is the h, the term associated with h of 1, there's a 1 implied up front there, is equal to 1, and h of, well, let's see what this last term is. We look up here, the exponent, uh, the thing multiplying the exponent up here is a 4, so that's associated with n equal 4. So h of 4 is equal to minus 3. So I could sketch this, and um, I'd have 9 at 0, and I'd have 1 at 1, and then I'd have a minus 3 at 4, and I'd have 0 values in, at 2 and 3 in between there. And it's 0 everywhere else because there are only three terms in that summation. So that's what the impulse response looks like for this system. Um, now we could actually write this out um, as a series of impulses. So we could say that h of n is equal to 9 delta of n plus delta of n minus 1. That captures the term at, at 1. And then plus sorry, minus 3 delta of n minus 4. So that would be our final answer to this, and here's the sketch of h of n. 
And so all we were doing, basically, is relating the coefficients in this equation to the numbers that we see in this equation. So it's pretty straightforward to do. So why don't we work an example where you give it a try. So here's the example I'd like you to try. Here's h of omega hat is equal to 3 e to the minus j 22 omega hat minus 5 e to the minus j 52 omega hat and just figure out what h of n is. So why don't you pause the video and solve this problem and then turn off, then restart the video and see if you got the right answer. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and worked the problem for yourself. Um, but all we're going to do here is look at these coefficients and the associated um, coefficient in the exponent. So this says, this 22 here says, this, is, this 3 is the value when n is equal to 22. So h of n is going to be 3 delta of n minus 22. Um, and then this coefficient is associated with the term at 52. So it's minus 5 delta of n minus 52. Whoops. So we could do a sketch down here. And at 22, it'll be equal to 3. And we have zeros before that. And then we have a bunch of zeros in here. And then at 52, way over at 52, it's equal to minus 5. And it's zeros everywhere outside of that. So that's our sketch of h of n. So that was pretty straightforward to do. So all we're using is that there's basically a one-to-one -one relationship between the coefficients we see in this equation and the coefficients we see in this equation. And that's what we're exploiting. It goes back, it goes back to um, just the definition of the frequency response. Okay, that concludes our video today. Um, if you want more information about the ECE 201 course that this video was made for, you can check out um, this website. And if you want more information about Mason and the Volgino School of Engineering, check out these websites. Thanks for listening.